Okay, so get this right. Today, we are diving deep, and I mean deep, into Trump's tariffs. Ooh, juicy. It is, but specifically the ones aimed at China. And you know the uh -huh. usual thing you always hear, tariffs, they equal inflation. Yeah, yeah. But get this, China's doing something really different. I mean, they have some of the highest tariffs around, but instead of like crazy high prices, they're actually dealing with deflation. Whoa, that's interesting. I know, right? It's like, what's going on? And we're going to figure that out today. We're using excerpts from 360 Trump tariffs by Ronald M. George to kind of break down this whole puzzle. Yeah. What I think is so fascinating about all this is how China just seems to be going against like everything everyone says about tariffs and inflation. Like they found a loophole. Yeah. It really like challenges all those typical economic arguments, you know? Totally. So walk me through this a little. What does the source say are the reasons people like freak out about tariffs, the classic arguments against them? Well, OK, so the source, it highlights that tariffs can lead to inflation. Right because they increase how much imported goods cost. So, like, imagine those costs just getting passed down the line yeah. from businesses to, well, to you, basically. Right. Making everything more expensive. Right? Yeah. That's the basic idea. Okay, that makes sense. But China's not seeing that happen, are they? Exactly. And the source really digs into eight factors that, you know, contribute to this. It's right. really not just one thing. It's this whole, like, web of interconnected reasons. Whoa. But I think if I had to pick, like, the most mind-blowing one, it would be their massive domestic production. Okay. They just make so much of what they need in China. So they're not reliant on those pricier imports. Right. Like, they're insulated yeah. from, like, all the global price shocks and stuff. They've got a safety net. Exactly. It's like, imagine having, like, a backup generator, you know, when the power goes out. Yeah. Like that. That's a really good analogy. What's another factor that kind of stands out to you? Um, this one, I think, is a little counterintuitive. Uh -huh. But... China's economic slowdown actually plays a part in, like, keeping inflation in check. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, yeah, slower growth is usually not good. Right. But it can create what's called deflationary pressure. Okay. You know, when demand weakens, businesses might lower prices to, like, attract buyers. You know, supply and demand. Right, yeah. That's classic. So it's almost like instead of prices going up because of tariffs, they're going down because of the slower economy. Totally. It's this really fascinating dynamic. Wow. Yeah. And the source also mentions that Chinese consumers, they tend to save a lot. Yeah. Which like further pushes this whole deflationary thing. So it's like their spending habits are helping them like get through this. Yeah. It's a fascinating example of how like different economic situations and different policies can lead to totally different outcomes. That's really wild. Yeah. OK, so we see that China has this like unique situation that's letting them kind of like weather the whole tariff storm. But our source, it goes even further and suggests that Trump saw tariffs as like more than just an economic thing, like yeah. a strategic tool, almost like a weapon. It's a controversial take, yeah, for sure. For sure. But the source, it lays out five key ways these tariffs can be used as like a negotiating weapon. Ooh. Okay. Like this high stakes chess game. Ooh. OK, I'm ready to hear this. <laughs> so. How did Trump supposedly use tariffs as this leverage in his dealings with China? Well, the source says that, like, putting high tariffs on Chinese goods was a way for the U.S. to get some bargaining power in, you know, all those trade negotiations. Right. It's okay. like saying, hey, we're willing to hit you where it hurts economically unless you make some concessions. Oh, so use the tariffs to force China to make deals that are good for the U.S. Exactly. Those concessions could be anything, you know, yeah. like China agreeing to buy more American products. Right. Or opening up their markets oh, wow. or adopting fairer trade practices. I see. The idea is that then the tariffs would be, you know, lifted or lowered as I, part of like negotiated agreement. OK, that <laughs> makes sense. So it's not about hurting China's economy. It's about like using that pressure to get something. Exactly. What else did Trump supposedly want to do with tariffs? Well, the source also points to um, the Trump farm bill negotiations. OK. As like a really good example of this tactic. OK. Apparently, by using tariffs like really strategically, Trump got China to agree to buy a whopping $50 billion worth of U.S. agricultural products. Wait, $50 billion? $50 billion. That's huge. So tariffs can be used to support our own industries. That's what the source is arguing, yeah. Okay. It suggests that, you know, tariffs can be a way to, like, level the playing field, right? Yeah. And give American businesses a little bit of a boost. Okay, I see how this could be powerful, but it's also risky, right? 
But what if China's just like, no, we're going to put tariffs on your stuff? Right. Yeah, that's a really valid concern. Yeah. And the source acknowledges that, yeah, there are downsides right. to using tariffs like a weapon. But it also says they can be a more measured approach than, mm. you know, some other options. But, like, I don't know, military action or like full-blown economic sanctions. So it's about finding that balance between putting on the pressure but not like going too far. Exactly. It's about using economic leverage you know, strategically to try to achieve those foreign policy goals. Wow, this is making me rethink everything I thought I knew about tariffs. <laughs> I know, right? It's not just, <laughs> like, economics, it's global power dynamics. Yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. I'm, like, hooked now. It's a lot. Yeah. So we've covered how China's doing its own thing and how Trump used tariffs to influence China. Right. But there's more to this story, right? There is. This source actually talks about a potential outcome that sounds too good to be true. You're talking about um, the author's vision of a U.S.-China-Russia alliance? Yeah. The yeah. big three. E? Seems pretty far-fetched. I know. It raises some eyebrows, that's for sure. It does. Yeah. It's like picturing, I don't know, a lion and a dragon and a bear all like cuddling up for a photo. I know, right? But that's where we'll pick up in part two of this whole deep dive. I can't wait. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back. Last time we were talking about like how Trump maybe used tariffs as this strategic chess move with China. Right. It sounds like this source, 360 Trump tariffs, lays out some pretty specific ways he did that. Yeah, it does. And it gets like even more interesting when you see how these tactics go like beyond just economics. Oh, OK. So like, tell me, what's the first way Trump supposedly used these tariffs to his advantage? OK, so the source actually says Trump saw tariffs as a way to like pressure China into dealing with the opioid crisis. OK. And specifically those chemicals that end up in, like, fentanyl. Really? So, like, using tariffs to force action on a major health issue? Exactly. It's pretty wild. It is, yeah. The source actually claims that tariffs could, like, push China to tighten up those regulations on those chemicals. Okay. Maybe even, like, ban exporting them. So it's, like, hitting them where it hurts economically to try and protect people here. Yeah. It kind of shows how tariffs could be this tool to address you know, issues that go beyond just, like, trade imbalances. Yeah. It's about, you know, influencing stuff on a global scale. Wow, it makes you wonder, like, what other livers are out there, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so what's the next way that Trump supposedly used these tariffs strategically? Okay, so this one's about um, combating something called dumping. Okay. Where basically a country floods another with, like, super cheap goods just to crush the competition. Oh, yeah. So, like, undercutting everyone to just dominate the market. Exactly. That's uh, pretty sneaky. Yeah, exactly. The source suggests that, you know, Trump saw tariffs as a way to counter China's dumping practices, mm. especially in industries like, you know, steel right. and manufacturing. So instead of just letting those cheap imports, you know, take over, it's like the tariffs kind of level the playing field a little bit. Exactly. It's almost like building a wall, but it's economics. That's a really good uh, analogy. Yeah. And that actually brings us to the fourth way. You know, tariffs were potentially used okay. as a tool to kind of force these broader discussions with China that go beyond just trade. Oh, OK. So, like, more than just buying and selling goods, yeah. like, what kind of things are we talking about? Oh, you know, like human rights, but, environmental standards, yeah. cybersecurity, things like that. Oh, wow. Stuff that impacts, like, the whole global landscape. So it's like tariffs are a way of saying, hey, we need to talk about this stuff and we're serious. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like putting this like big thing on the agenda and saying we're not leaving until we talk about this. That's a bold move. It is. OK, so what's the last way that Trump might have used tariffs to his advantage? OK, so the source says that tariffs could act as like a deterrent, basically. OK. Preventing China from doing certain things that might like escalate tensions. OK, like what? Give me an example. Okay, so think like, um, I don't know, military aggression in the South China Sea. Right. Or maybe like unfair trade practices that, you know, hurt American businesses, uh -huh. things like that. I see. So it's like by putting those economic consequences in place, the U.S. could discourage China from like doing those things. Exactly. It's like don't even think about crossing this line. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Funny. The source suggests that economic pressure like tariffs, you know, yeah, can be like a, a less provocative way to influence behavior. Than what? Than, you know, something like military action. Right. Something more aggressive. Okay. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay. So we've gone from tariffs maybe causing inflation to tariffs as a way to deal with like the opioid crisis, right. protecting jobs here in the U.S. and even shaping like global behavior. Yeah. It's definitely a multifaceted issue. Oh, for sure. And the source we're looking at, it presents this really unique perspective on how they can be used strategically. It's really making me rethink everything I thought I knew about tariffs. Yeah. But remember, this is just one perspective. Exactly, yeah. There are definitely valid arguments, you know, for and against using tariffs in this way. Yeah. Okay, but now let's get to the really interesting part. Okay. Remember that uh, utopian vision we teased earlier? Oh, yeah. The whole U.S.-China-Russia alliance thing. Yeah. It's hard to, like, wrap my head around. It is. But the source actually lays out how this, like, impossible thing could actually happen. Okay, so we've explored how China's, like, playing by its own rules and how Trump maybe used tariffs as this global power move thing. Right. Now, about that prediction from our source, 360 Trump tariffs. Yeah. A U.S.-China-Russia alliance. Really? I know, the author Ronald M. George. He really throws a curveball with that one. Right. It's like they're all rivals on a reality show with all that tension. Yeah. Like picturing a lion and a dragon and a bear, you know, like or cuddling up for a photo. Yeah, it's a wild image. What's the source's logic behind this, like, this crazy idea? Well, it argues that if, like, these three superpowers actually, you know, teamed up, it could lead to, like, world peace and prosperity we've never seen. Okay, so it's like, let's put aside our differences and make the world a better place. Right. It's a nice thought. Yeah. The source even says this alliance could be, like, the key to, you know, Trump's make America great again. Oh, wow. It's a bold claim. It is, because, I mean, think about it. The U.S. and China, they're always going head-to-head -head over trade stuff. And Russia's, well, Russia's got its own history with both of them. Yeah, totally. It's complicated. You've got different political systems. You've got economic competition. You've got all, all that history between them. Yeah. So how would this alliance, like, actually work? How do you get over all that? Well, the source doesn't get into, like, specifics. Right. But it says, like, through these strategic negotiations and, you know, cooperation. Yeah. Maybe even using those tariffs as a starting point. Okay. These countries could find, you know, like common ground on the big issues, global security, economic stuff, you know. So instead of fighting, they'd be working together to like tackle the big challenges. Exactly. Yeah. Climate change or terrorism. Right. Poverty, that kind of stuff. Exactly. The source seems to believe that like their combined, you know, economies and military and their global influence could like really make a difference. I mean, it sounds good, but is it actually realistic? It seems almost impossible. Right. There are definitely a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this whole deep dive is about, like, exploring these different ideas. Yeah. Even the ones that sound kind of out there. Right. It's like a like a thought experiment. Okay. A what if mm -hmm. that makes us think beyond, you know, how things are right now. So instead of just accepting things as they are, it's like, hey, maybe there's a better way. Right. Exactly. Maybe this source is right. Maybe. Or maybe it's just, you know, like, wishful thinking. Well, whether you believe it or not, we've covered a lot in this deep dive. Yeah, me. From how tariffs actually work to like their potential as a geopolitical tool and now even like this utopian vision of the future. It's been a journey through like economics, mm -hmm. global politics, even a little philosophy. Yeah, exactly. You know, we challenged some ideas, looked at different perspectives. Hopefully got some people thinking and debating. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that's what it's all about, right? Getting people to think critically. Yeah. Question assumptions. Because things are complicated. Exactly. There aren't any easy answers. So, as always, you know, keep exploring, keep questioning, keep diving deeper into these issues. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.